Hi, my name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to this week's edition of Understanding Adobe Photoshop. Today, we're going to take a look at using a tablet. Now, a tablet is a specialized input device that allows you to do more natural type of strokes inside of Photoshop. Essentially, you use a device like this, which is generally called a stylus or a pen, and then use it on a tablet like so, where you can actually capture strokes into the computer. This is great if you're doing painting or you want to work on mask edges or just give your wrist a break. So let's see how this works. I'm currently using a tablet from Wacom. Now, Wacom makes all sorts of great tablets. You can check them out. And there's other manufacturers out there, so feel free to check. And let's just go over quickly to our system preferences. And when you install the tablet, it ships with a driver that loads it in. So whether you're on a Mac or a PC, you're just going to fire up those preferences or control panels where you can modify your settings. I'm going to specify here that this is a 9 by 12 tablet, because that's the particular size we're using, and that I have a pen here. Notice that we have sensitivity to things like tilt. Tilt allows you to actually tilt the pen so you can get a little bit of angle to it. And this really comes in handy when you're doing brush strokes. You also can adjust how it feels, if it's a soft brush or a firm brush. Now, if you want to double click, you're simply going to hold down the modifier there. And this is saying when I click backwards, it's going to do a double click. If I click forward on the pen, it's going to register as a right click. And you'll see that on the pen itself, there's a little button here that you can actually use so you can modify the click, if it's a right click or a double click, things like that. The back end of the pen is just literally an eraser, so it'll work that way by default. Now, those settings seem fine, so I'm going to go ahead and close this. There are actually other settings you could tweak. You'll notice here that on this particular model, we actually have touch strips here and buttons, and you could reassign those to commands like brush size, different tools so you can quickly switch, and that's really designed to make it more comfortable. Let's go over to an image here. I'm inside of Photoshop, and I'm just going to make a new empty document for a moment. And we have our empty canvas. Now, when we pick the brush tool, you'll see that we have several options with the tool. Right here, we actually have a brush here that says, go ahead and allow this to be airbrush options. And that's one way of using the brush tool. We can also click on the panel here for brushes, and you'll see we have several options. So let's go to Shape Dynamics. And Pen pressure is one of our options here. So adjust the size based upon the pressure of the pen, and adjust the angle based upon the tilt of the pen. So that works really, really well. We can actually turn the airbrush options off here, because we're going to use the pen options instead. So that works great. And let me go ahead and click here. And I want you to watch. As I press with the brush, if I press lightly, it's a small brush. If I press harder, it's a bigger brush. So a light stroke. And as I push harder and harder, the stroke actually thickens. If I lighten up my pressure, it goes thin. So this makes for a more natural input. Like this is a real brush. If you were just to gently stroke, you get a thin line. But if you push really hard, you get a thicker line. And that's really quite cool. To make this work better, make sure you have a soft edge brush. So you can come up here and adjust the hardness setting of your brush so it's a little more natural. Let's go ahead and just clear the canvas real quick. And I'm just going to load that with the default colors. There we go. And let's switch our foreground brush color. We'll go with red right now. Good. Now we've got shape dynamics here for the pressure and the tilt for the angle. But I also want to go ahead and play a little bit more here. Let's do some scattering. And we'll say that the pen pressure affects that. And we'll play a little bit here with count and scatter. There we go. And you see that works pretty well. I'm also going to go ahead and turn on the noise option to make that a little bit more aggressive. And we'll control that with the actual pen pressure. There we go. So let's take a look at the strokes now. I'll just click here to close that temporarily. And as we start to draw a gentle stroke, creating a very thin line. As we push harder, a much more aggressive stroke. And notice that noise and texture is in there. And you could start to combine your strokes to do actual digital paintings. There's all sorts of cool things. Now, I am not a fine artist or even a painter for that matter, but there are wonderfully talented people out there. Perhaps for some of the best examples, take a look at Bert Monroy's books. He's got wonderful digital paintings that he does from the ground up with Photoshop using a tablet. I do like to use a tablet, though, for masking purposes, because it really helps me get better edges. 
Let's go ahead and switch over to an image there that has some masks attached. And you'll see over here in the Layers panel that we have masks. I'm going to turn a couple of these off for a second. And what you're seeing here, here's one, and it's being used to tweak the color of the rock there. And there's a mask edge attached right here with black and white. Well, one of the cool things I could do with the paintbrush is I can actually adjust that edge. So we'll get a smaller brush here. Let's go ahead and do the left bracket key. And I'm going to grab the smudge tool, which is another paintbrush-like tool that allows you to push the pixels around. And we're going to set this to darken mode so it only pushes the dark pixels. Now, as we start to push with the brush here, you'll see what happens. We can actually push that edge in and refine this, and it's fairly natural to just draw and trace over that edge. You see how that's working quite nicely, and it lets us refine the edge of that mask for that color effect, so it's a little more believable. Now, I could just click here and draw. And notice that as I'm drawing up the edge here, as I trace from the bottom left corner of the tablet to the top corner of the tablet, it matches what's going on on the screen. If I change my zoom level in and I start to draw, you'll see that my motion on the tablet covers less space in the actual pixels. And that's really useful to know. If you want greater control, simply zoom in and out of your image inside of Photoshop, and then your brush strokes will require a longer stroke to make an impact. That allows for finer detail when painting. Similarly though, if I went ahead and zoomed all the way out and I started to make a stroke, you'll see that dragging from the bottom of the tablet all the way to the top edge of the tablet moves the cursor a much greater distance. So you're going to want to find the right balance there for your magnification level. Now, that's just some of the things you can do with a tablet. There are so many options that a tablet opens up, from painting to designing to just giving your wrist a break. There's tablets at all sorts of price points, too. This particular model is a bit expensive because it's enormous. This one's really designed so you could sit back from the computer, place it on your lap, and just draw. And I do like that. But there are much more reasonable ones coming in from the lines like the Bamboo line, starting around $100. The cool thing, too, is that those entry-level ones often include Photoshop elements bundled with. And as you get to some of the higher-end tablets, they've got really cool plugins that are bundled with them, like Nick software plugins that will work inside of Photoshop. My name is Rich Harrington. I hope this gave you a couple more ideas on what you could do to expand your opportunities inside Adobe Photoshop. Be sure to check out our resource blog at rastervector.com where you'll find other tips and downloadable freebies to help you get more from Adobe Photoshop. Thanks for tuning in.